question about that ladies and gentlemen i'm going to click into the first game here now in the best of five between chali and asamk um and Teben and migo a two versus two tournament we are all set the settings are correct we have the recorded game on we don't have to allow cheats ladies and gentlemen clicking in now into the map kamchatta um so what map is this it's a very uh very standard map I would say it's one we have seen a lot in the one versus one tournaments uh, it was the starting map in the group stage for uh, I think the ESOC summer tournament or the autumn tournament so we've seen it quite a lot already and in general it's just uh, a solid map um, there is a trade route with three trading posts there are a lot of uh, scattered uh, livestock animals all over the map as you can see on the minimap the white spots um, are the livestock uh, goats um, and uh, there are little islands well th there's w there's one island in the center but there are like ponds where you can walk over so uh, you can walk over there um, and you can actually build on it as well I believe but you, of course you cannot walk or build on here on the actual water so there are some choke points which are interesting and uh, which should give some entertaining content to you all ladies and gentlemen I'm going to turn on fog of war here for a little bit and uh, see if we uh, can see their scouting pattern a little uh, of course Teben is going to be French so he's going to start out with a scout which can help him a lot um, with discovering other goats around the map and uh, seeing where the enemy is and uh, what they are doing so that uh, the scout is definitely a powerful thing for the French civilization um, by the way guys the stream just started if you just tuned in um, there's a two versus two tournament going on right now we're in game number one so you haven't missed anything yet and we're going to see a best of five uh, from these different teams ASMK and Chali as you see here and Teben and Migo or Migo um, if the sound or uh, the video quality or if anything is not good please tag me in the Twitch chat and I will uh, try to fix it the best I can um, if anything is good you can tag me as well and I will take that feedback into account as well as you can see here uh, Chelly is scouting with his goat a little bit in the back of his map um, in the back of his base just to see if there are any other uh, livestock animals here or maybe uh, some hunts um, so of course scouting out with those units is a little bit tricky since you don't want to be uh, get caught and then the enemy has your goat um, but it can help you scout little bits of the map around your base looks like uh, they are both teaming up here William Ball and Emilski teaming up to get 150 coin which is a huge amount and um, Charlie actually building a market right away to use that 150 gold and I assume that yeah he right now has 180 coin in the bank but he can sell that for wood and then he can uh, get hunting dogs up earlier and uh, maybe even get up a uh, blockhouse earlier if he sells that for wood that is right now it's still 180 coin uh, what else is happening here we have the scout from Teben scouting around with his hero um, Migo as well scouting the left side and it looks like Chali and Asim mostly scouting the right side of the map there's still quite a lot of uh, undiscovered map here in the south of the map a lot of lift stock there left and some good treasures left on the map as well a family of monkeys is a, a pretty good uh, treasure actually it gives you five monkeys um, which don't do huge damage but they have a uh, bonus damage against treasure guardians and uh, of course they can help you uh, harass some villagers early on as you can see six hand attack but um, 0.0 uh, 0 0.12 villagers so it only does one attack to a villager but it does uh, uh, 18 versus a treasure guardian so you can get some powerful treasures with uh, that family of monkeys 5% discount on most coin costs is a very powerful one if uh, you're actually building units that cost coin so maybe for British it's less important but more for for example Germany um, 90 wood is a very solid treasure overall just a good one that speeds up your build orders and gets you uh, gets you a free house basically um, 35 coin is being picked up as well uh, this is a huge one 450 coin but it's uh, guarded by six of these uh, dacoids so it's uh, going to be hard to take that in h1 and uh, possibly going to 
maybe it won't uh, ever be taken uh, this entire game so uh, about the civilizations they're right now aging up so it's a good moment uh, to talk about what they are doing and why they're doing it um, as you can see Charlie is aging up quite late so um, he's aging up with 17 villagers in an one versus one you almost always see Russia age up with 14 villagers but they make villagers in batches of three so you either have to choose between aging up with 14 or with 17 you can't really um, age up with 15 or 16 since you have to bet train uh, villagers in batches. So uh, Chelly has chosen to go for the 17 villager age up. It's a little bit more greedy, it gives you more economic st stability, but it means that you age up uh, quite late. And as you can see, he's not even halfway, while the entire uh, opponent team is always the, almost aged up, and uh, so is ASAP. So it's not really good for a hard rush to age up so late, but it is good for more economic, uh, economic uh, timing, so to say. Uh, looks like he's not uh, even building his block hut all the way uh, forward on the middle island for example but just in front of his base uh, near a hunt so he has that hand uh, he has access to that hunt now but uh, not going to uh, be too aggressive looks like here there's uh, <laughs> one of the monkeys fry talk is harassing a villager but uh, of course it cannot really do any significant damage what else is happening? Yeah, as you can see, uh, Migo is standing in the base of his opponent uh, just to see what he's doing. And as you can see, his first shipment is 700 wood, which is to be expected from a British player. It's a very standard uh, shipment for them. Um, as you can see, it's going to be even built one wall segment just to see incoming units, uh, incoming raids and whatever. So a uh, good one to get a little bit of uh, line of sight. As you can see, uh, they are starting double stable. I'm not quite sure if this is some miscommunication or not, because, well, double stable, it can of course work against a full Strelet army, uh, or maybe Strelet with cavalry. Um, but then again, just a little bit of anti-cav, uh, some musketeers or some pikemen uh, can do great damage to uh, double hussars. So um, one of them will probably have to add a barracks in there sometime. But uh, looks like for now they're both starting out with hussars. Tevin is going to get only three out and Migo is going to get a full batch of five hussars out. So right now there are eight hussars on the map for them. And uh, well, it looks like uh, they're going to be a little bit aggressive with that. They're going forward. And if they're going to catch these five Cossacks and these ten Strelitz, it's going to be a huge victory for them. Because it's uh, it's an entire shipment for Chelly. So uh, he will have to be careful to protect it. Um, looks like those Strelitz barely got spotted. But uh, looks like... Yeah, there they are. Now Migo has spotted the Strelitz and the five Cossacks. And uh, ASAM not going to be uh, able to help out anytime soon. Five Musketeers are coming forward. But the eight Hussars are already on top of the entire army of Chali. Musketeers in hand combat now going forward. Five Hussars out for ASAM and four more Cossacks shipped by Chali. And now they have the upper hand again. Um, Miko trying to take out a villager on his way back, but only taking damage and not taking out any villager. So only three hussars left for him uh, with little HP, so effectively only two hussars. Um, Tabin has got full HP on his hussars, but is getting caught here by ASM, who has got a full five hussars and he should be able to win this fight with correct micro. And now that Shelly is coming uh, as well with three more hussars at his infantry in the back, they are going to win this first fight uh, very convincingly uh, without making too many losses. So I think in the end, Shelly and ASM should be happy with this first engagement. Meanwhile, Miko is going forward and is trying to uh, maybe do some little bit of raiding, but ASM still got three hussars left in his base and is able to repel this uh, attack for now and may not even lose a single villager. The entire army here in the, in the top has been cleaned. And I think Chelly is going to be a little bit more aggressive now that uh, the threat is gone for now. Minuteman is being called by ASM, so the Hussars from Miko definitely have to go back now. And uh, they really can't do uh, too much damage here. Uh, not until those Minutemen are on 0 HP. But Tevin has got his scout here, uh, positioned in a very clever uh, position. <laughs> so... Um, very uh, very good, he can scout exactly what is coming through and he can see where those Minutemen are heading. More 
has there's a buy Miko getting caught here and it looks like Teban is going to age up fairly soon he's got 1500 food and he's uh, sent 700 coin to uh, get to the third age so Teban is going to the third age probably going to make uh, goons once he's there since uh, he's the French they've got good cavalry upgrades uh, looks like he's adding a barracks as well so he may go for skirmishers instead Miko also adding a barracks but he's not quite got the resources to age up just yet he started out with five villagers very interesting shipment like i said most of the time you start out with 700 wood but after that only send wood shipments so he doesn't have a uh, shipment like 700 coin to uh, get the resources he needs to age up so for now he will be stuck in the second age tabin uh, almost uh on two thirds of aging up he's of course using the fast age up politician so he will be there very quickly but will it be just in time to actually save uh, their bases from this army there let's take a look at the military units nine hussars now out for asm five pikemen and a large infantry mass for chali so um just a few hussars for the other team, for Tabin's team, so uh, I'm not quite sure if they can hold this, but if a, f a shipment like two Falconets pops out uh, in like a minute, as you can see Tabin just sent a shipment, it just went for, from 1 to 0, he's got no shipments left, he just sent a shipment and if it's something like two Falconets or perhaps eight skirmishers, they may be able to repel this big inf infantry mass and um, with some trained goons those hussars won't be too big of a problem, so let's see if they can do that cavalry hit points being sent by Mingo. I'm going to turn it to ship and sent again. Cavalry hit points for him, but he only got a few uh, cavalry units, so I'm not quite sure. Well, he's he's got a decent batch, but uh, uh, let's see if it's actually me dropping here. Um, looks like my internet is fine, so let's see if they're all here and. Yes. Uh, See what's happening. Yes. Okay, it looks like we had a little yes. bit of a lag spike. So this cavalry batch is now uh, upgraded. But once again, we have to see how they can deal with this big infantry mass from Chelly And uh, if they have a shipment to do that with. Um, Tabin, there it is. Two falconets. Now it's rolling out. It's going to be protected by these musketeers, by these hussars. And uh, I think Chelly and Ace will have to go back once this shipment is out. Since uh, this is a powerful one. And uh, hard to deal with if you don't have uh, the range or a good... Uh, good position on the Falconets. Looks like the Cossacks just going to run in, going to straight up bash them down. Let's see if they can succeed. Meanwhile, Falconets doing decent damage against this Musketeer batch. One of the Falconets is down. Other one is now almost, uh, it's now halfway down and now ASM running in as well. So the second Falconet is down as well. But the Hussars, the upgraded Hussars from Miggle, all on the Strelets from Chali. And it looks like they're going to wipe this clean and all those Strelets are going to die. Even reinforcements from ASM coming forward, but they are not going to be enough to repel this, uh, this big mass from Tabin and Migo and it looks like they're going to be uh, quite happy with the spot they're in right now as you can see uh, the the economic population is still in favor of Chelly and ASAM. Uh, ASAM has got a lot more houses than Migo, uh, a lot better economy, but the army is definitely in favor of Team Tabin. And uh, looks like Chelly is going to lose even more units here. And uh, there should be a good window for Tabin and Migo to do a lot of damage right now. Um, Chelly sending Team Cavalry Scouts, uh, um, ASAM sending team musketeer hit points so their units are upgraded now as well he's now sending fencing school so he can use his two blockhouses to train uh, units even more quickly even when his economy economy is not that great fencing school does help you uh, get out a continuous stream of units once you have the resources one minute man doing some damage here which is uh, quite a good thing of course distracts the enemy as well and uh, maybe can take out one of the villagers um, as you can see, Tabin chasing down another uh, Hussar from ASM. Looks like uh, Chelly is coming forward with his Musketeer badge. But uh, once these. Okay, it looks like he's sending gold actually. Uh, quite interesting. I thought we may actually see a unit shipment perhaps or uh, uh, economic uh, upgrade. But 1000 gold is probably going to just um, get out a lot of units with that. I don't think he's going to the 4th age uh, at this moment. 
Is it going forward with some pikemen as well? Maybe uh, trying to harass the villagers here. But there's a tower going up from Migo. And I think those pikemen are not going to be too effective here. Once that outpost is up. There it is. Um, looks like Asim and Chelly have now found where the entire economy is. And so have Migo and Tabin. So all of them are going to the west of the map. And going to see if they can do some good damage against this uh, economy of Migo. Which is entirely in the open here. Except for that one outpost. So... All the armies going to the west of the map and uh, to see if they can do some good damage. Stebben is lagging behind a little bit. He is uh, still in his base but he should be joining fairly soon. And uh, as to who is going to win this fight it's uh, going to come down to Micro. Um, Looks like Migo and Tabin have got a little bit more military unit population, especially since the Russian units are not worth that many units. But they have some min minute men uh, in there as well. They have 12 minute men pumped in their armies as well. And they're essentially worth zero um, military units. So, um, because they can shot be shot down very easily. So, who's to going to win this fight? I think Tabin and Miko definitely have an advantage, but uh, in the end, Micro is going to be a very important factor here. In the meanwhile, ASAM is aging up, so they probably don't want to take this fight right away, uh, since there he's going to have upgraded units fairly soon, but uh, he needs to hold out until then, so he probably wants to prolong this fight, but looks like he's not going to be too successful with that. A lot of musketeers here in hand combat, but there's so many musketeers from Tabin and Miko in the back, shooting them down, that I think Miko Migo and Tevin are just going to crush this fight by, uh, well, sheer force basically. And they're definitely going to uh, be victorious in this battle if they can turn it into a victory of this game. Uh, remains to be seen. Chelly is quite behind in economic population as you can see. And um, they have got a good window right now. So I think Tevin and Migo are in a fine position right now to... Um, to maybe even turn this uh, this win of a battle into a win of the entire game. But uh, maybe uh, ASM can hold out once he's in A3 with upgraded units. And with a good military shipment from the third age. Um, it takes a bit for him to age up of course. Since he doesn't have the fast age up, age up politician. But um, he will be there in approximately 20 seconds. Uh, more musketeers and strats streaming, pouring out of the blockhouses from Chelly. He lost his entire army here just a minute ago, but now he's remassed entirely. And he got a good military unit population, but once again, uh, Tevin and Migo's uh, army are still very powerful and very upgraded. As you can see, Migo already got two upgrades on his Hussars. And um, let's see, Tevin has got one upgrade on his musketeers as well. Looks like a lot of ASM's villagers are going to be in trouble here. Migo right on top of them with his Hussar badge. And uh, I'm not quite sure if ASM is going to be able to defend this. He's now 8 stop and he's probably uh, upgrading his musketeers. No, not even yet. Um, so it's going to be really hard for them to survive this army. Uh, they don't have any cavalry. Um, so th those goons of, of Tevin are probably not going to be too effective, but uh, they just don't have enough infantry to take on this entire mass. Uh, Royal Mint now coming out for Tevin, his second economic upgrade, and uh, even if they are not going to win this fight immediately, they're going to have a very supreme economy in the back of it. Two Falconets are now coming out, and uh, this may turn the tide. Uh, meanwhile, there are some raidings being done in the top from Migo and here by Migo as well. So he's doing a good job raiding. And the two Falconets now scaring away this big mass of infantry from uh, Tevin and Migo that uh, suddenly doesn't look so uh, big anymore and not so impressive anymore. Meanwhile, uh, this raid is being dealt with just by the villagers. Some more musketeers coming in perhaps to do a raid as well. A lot of villagers there on wood and should Migo spot that he could definitely be in trouble that is Chelly. More hussars now being added to the south of the map to deal with the villagers and those villagers are not going to be able to deal with uh, that raid alone so he will have to do something else. Tabin sniping down the falconets with his goons. Sorry but I was watching a raid but uh, yeah that those falconets are down and uh, that is uh, going to be very problematic. Azemk already on mills right now. He is sending 
Adding a second town center for more economy, but uh, Tavern is already on the second one as well. And I'm not quite sure if Azem is going to uh, be able to save this game uh, alone. Shelly is still behind in economy, now adding his third mill. Of course, uh, mills are fairly safe since you don't have to be out open on the map. But it does mean that you have to invest 400 wood for a building that uh, gathers uh, resources uh, actually slower than Hans. So it's not a good investment, especially not uh, already after just 70 minutes. Um, 70 minutes, I didn't mean 70 minutes at all. Uh, looks like some longbowmen being able to deal with the Sars here. Longbowmen are upgraded to colonial uh, status already. So they are quite powerful. They go doing even more damage to the economy of Chell right now. And as you can see, economic units is only on 45 villagers. While well, the rest all has, uh, well, a lot more. Uh, 56, 46 for Tabin as well. But of course, he's got 1.25 times better villagers since he's French. So Shelly definitely behind in this game and uh, it's going to be hard for them to crawl back into it I think especially with those big reinforcements uh, from Tamman coming out five cuirassiers with another two here uh, a lot of goons in the back as well and those strelets are probably going to be in trouble there's not much to defend them with and uh, cuirassiers do excellent against big masses of strelets let's see if they can take it out entirely and um, maybe if they can win the game on the back of that um, Meanwhile, more units being raided by Tabin. His hussars are all over the map, as you can see on the minimap as well. All green units everywhere. Tabin doing a lot of damage against this. Five pikemen from ASM coming out, but okay, with those goons, that's going to be enough to repel these cuirassiers or maybe take them down entirely, which is going to be a good trade for ASM, definitely. But still, a lot of hussars running around the base of Chali, um, taking down villagers, idling his villagers, and uh, going to be very problematic in general. ASM never even finished is his second town center so his economy is not really going to crawl back either trying to take down some hussars with his villagers um and it's working, uh, but it's not really an effective trade, not something he wants to make probably. Curvaceers and goons still in the back of his base, taking down villagers and uh, taking out the uh this, the lone uh, military units that are wandering around so it looks like they are just all in this base and they're not going anywhere and uh, it's going to be hard for them to crawl back as I said meanwhile Miro is already on mails as well even when there are some safe hunts left on the map but uh, he probably doesn't want to um, doesn't want to go all around the map. He even added a land grab jelly. So his mills only cost, I believe, 240 wood now. So it's uh, not that much anymore, but still, it's a slow gathering resource and uh, not something you want to invest your wood into. Um, this mill actually getting spotted by Mego. Those villagers were gathering wood here earlier, but now all going to be taken down. Another nine villagers lost for Chelly, which is quite huge. ASM has got some goons, but uh, looks like he's not in a position to deal with this entire army. Um, Chelly is coming around from the other side with a pure strelet mass. Should those cuirassiers get on top of the strelets, they could be in trouble, but looks like the cuirassiers are going to chase down the goons, and uh, that's going to be an effective trade for the cuirassiers if they can actually snare them and take them all out. Um, Tevin still sending more upgrades, cavalry combat and textile mill for more plantation gathering rate. So uh, they're setting up for the long game. So is Miko with his land grab. Whereas ASM just sent 8 villagers and 1000 coin to uh, basically stay alive and uh, try to hold out as long as he can. Um, Middle of the map, Tabin and uh, Migo are just gathering uh, whatever they want since uh, they really don't have anything to be scared of. There are not a lot of raids going on from Chali or Azam, so uh, they're quite safe to gather there. Azam now ending a third town center, so he's trying to get uh, his economy up again uh, after he took quite a hit. But as you can see in the score, Tabin is still ahead and uh, Tabin may even get the full um, villager population fairly soon. If you look at economic units, already on 56 right now out of 80 villagers. So he's definitely getting there and uh, getting a very strong economy in this game that's getting later and later. Um, let's switch back to ship and send again. Migo coming in with some cavalry uh, trying to do some more raiding. There are some towers around and some houses to provide line of sight. But it's still going to be a distraction and going to idle some villagers. So in the end, ASM will have to deal with that probably with some of his dragoons. 
Looks like Miko adding some longbowmen as well. Of course, a very good late game skirmisher unit. And uh, Async uh, still is making some pikemen. Uh, and uh, looks like they're going for a push. Chelly and Asam a strelet pikeman composition. So um, definitely not too strong if anything like Curiseer should come or maybe Falconets. But uh, for now it looks like they can take out some villagers and some buildings there. More ASAM villagers going down. They were gathering uh, out in the woods. But those longbowmen with their long range uh, cutting them down. And uh, again uh, diminishing the economy economic population from ASAM. Very interestingly, Chelly and Migo still not aged up. They definitely should have aged up. Especially Migo should have aged up quite some time ago, I feel. Um, he definitely had some chances. Um, when they had windows to, to attack, they should have stopped making some units, I think, for a bit, just to allow Migo to age up. Uh, Chelly as well, is not going to age up anytime soon, as you can see. He's not gathering any gold, only with six villagers. Um, so he's going to be stuck here, and Tevin is now going to the fourth age, and that's going to be a very scary um, for Team Azamp. Um, in the fourth age, he's got two heavy cannons, and of course, the powerful Curiseer upgrade that decreases cost, and the two factories, which are very... Uh, strong economic buildings so it's going to be really hard for Chile and ASAM to actually stay in this game uh, if uh, Tevin gets out those industrial upgrades and industrial economic buildings. Um, Middenman being called by Tevin here to repel the pikemen from ASAM. Um, yeah what else is happening let's see not really much going on in terms of raiding Chelly and Asam are out on the map again. They are trying to reclaim the center of the map. Going to take out this tower here. Maybe taking out some villagers and the tower in the south of the island as well. But um, in the end, uh, Tevin is going to have those 4th uh, age units fairly soon. Probably going to send two heavy cannons. He's going to have a very strong economy. Already got economic theory as well. Another 10% boost. Um, and now we've got veteran Curiseers running around and they're going to do a lot of damage against those uh, batched up units um, of ASAM and Chelly. Uh, meanwhile, Miko is aging up to the third age as well. He's going to upgrade this big longbowman mass as well. And uh, I think once they both got their upgrades out, Tabin and Miko, they're going to have a good window to push out. But until then... They probably want to hold out with pushing for a bit so that they can upgrade their units and uh, get some more out before they fight. Looks like a big best of batch of longbowmen and hussars is going forward and once he's aged stop, I assume he will immediately try to upgrade them so he can use it in the fight. Those curiosities are getting caught and the uh, upgraded pikemen do actually decent against this especially with the hussars tanking some damage. So I think this is a good trade for ASM. and Tevin definitely lost a lot of resources here but uh, this fight is uh, going to be fairly important and those hussars on top of the strelets is uh, quite scary for Chelly. He's got some musketeers to deal with any cavalry but a lot of longbowmen from Migo are going to take them out as well. Um, Asim has got some hussars going forward and they can actually uh, do some decent damage against these longbowmen so they may actually do quite well in this fight all in all. There are five curiosities coming forward from Tevin to raid but uh, I don't know if raiding is going to be the most important thing to do here once because this fight is not going so well for Tamman, for Migo, and he's losing all his longbowmen. They just got upgraded to veteran status and with the human upgrade. But he's losing a lot of units here and uh, he's not going to be too happy with that. But once again, Chelly losing a lot of villager hit points as well. A lot of villagers and uh, idle time. So not going to be too happy with the raid going on in his base. More Curiseers chasing down goons here. Um, so yeah, they, they were victorious in this fight for now. But I'm not quite sure if it was too effective and if it was enough. Jelly now finally upgrading to um, the third age. So that is good. Oh, look at that. A proxy artillery foundry from... <laughs> He's just going to take out a town center. Okay, I'm not quite sure if that's worth all the research for Pitards. But uh, yeah, basically Pitards are just one-time suicide units uh, that just take out one building um, and then they die as well. It looks like ASM is building a proxy artillery foundry here that is completely hidden and is going to take out this town center. 200 XP to ASM and taking down a town center, which is good for him, but is it going to be enough and is it going to be worth it in the end? Since petards um, cost a lot of 
Cost a lot of resources as well. And Tabin already on 70 villagers with a lot of upgrades behind them. Tabin, his eco is just supreme. He's in a very fine position and he shouldn't be scared of uh, losing um, his economic advantage anytime soon. Um, Chella is still on a lot of mills in his base now, adding another town center, but quite late into the game after 26 minutes. Um, Longbowmen going forward with some falconets and the cuirassiers. They're not upgraded yet. Um, as you can see, text completed for Tabin. Hasn't done any industrial technologies apart from the factory upgrade. But um, still, yeah, I'm not quite sure why he even upgraded to... Why he even went to the industrial age, I guess, for factories in that case. So, uh, just to boost in his economy even further. Um, Hussar's coming out for ASM, going to be in a fine position to take out some longbowmen or going to chase down those falconets. And it looks like at least one of the falconets is going to go down, but the second one is alive to fire at least one other shot until, until it goes down by the cavalry from ASM. It looks like it's go time now. Um, Chelly sent two falconets as well, and now every team, <laughs> every player in this game has sent two falconets. Chelly uh, as the last at 26 minutes and Tevin after just 10 minutes so quite interesting but his falconets are going to be quite useful here even against those long ranged longbowmen they're going to do fine and uh, again they're making quite efficient trades I'm not quite sure how they keep putting it off but ASM and Chelly are definitely putting off the most mm, well, the best trades, but uh, is it going to be enough for them to stay in the game? I keep asking myself that question just because of the economic disp disparity from Chelly and from Team Azemk and Chelly. Um, Azemk ending a barracks here, and uh, he's getting walled in by Mako actually, but should he move his villager to uh, this wall piece, he can actually block the wall, and uh, he may be able to... Uh, to completely prevent that wall from going up. Meanwhile, some more Curacier raids are going on here, but Azemk is going to catch it with his Sars from Longbow and taking down the trade post in the center of the map. More petards coming out. Another barracks being added. Those petards going to the south, but there's no building there, so they probably should just go for this uh, mill, which is the, n the next best thing for him to take down with his petards. Pikeman now coming out to take out these villagers and maybe siege down the wall so more uh, units can be trained from the barracks. Opwicknix out for Chelly. He sent five of them going to use them to maybe take down one of the factories we're going to check back in a minute to see if it actually succeeds Chelly and ASM pushing out here with the big strelet musketeer mess and some hussars from ASM adding in another town center and taking down some goons from Tabin looks like goons are out for Tabin now as well so factory not going down but it definitely did distract him and cost him some time on his units um, pikemen are out of these barracks right now harassing some villagers but uh, Tabin villagers actually idling here because the mill got retarded by ASAM and uh, this is actually shaping up to be a very interesting game I'm actually missing a fight here longbowmen going forward with nothing to protect them just pure longbowmen shoot their pop out five hussars those longbowmen are completely screwed but looks like it's going to be infinite against infantry only there were two falconets here but the two um, falconets were shot down by the longbow and they have 26 range which is enough to take on a falconet if you do have the mass up with nix harassing tablets economy here and uh, actually doing decent damage taking out some villagers meanwhile there's still a lot of idle villagers here uh, some villagers being taken down by the longbowmen as well from this barracks this barracks is also still up and this villager is up as well so asm using his uh, epm which is uh, well kind of known for he's got a very high epm he can uh, control a lot of things on the map at the same time he's actually doing decent damage here and harassing some villagers killing a mill killing a town center and should he uh, go a little bit more south he can maybe even take down some of the villagers here as well Tabin now has got out guard dragoons with cavalry combat on them and they are very scary they are uh, very uh, fast moving and uh, uh, do high damage so a very good all-round unit uh, against anything except basically longbowmen and uh, and strelets in this game. ASM is out on the map still with hussars, so those goons do very well against those um, hussars. But for now, he's using them to take out these longbowmen and actually making a very good trade there as well. Pikemen from ASM coming out to arrest villagers as well. The Opwicknicks have been shot down here by the big goon mass, as you can see. Uh, Tabin now going forward with his goon mass. Um, Curacier is not upgraded to uh, industrial level yet. Maybe he doesn't want to make 
to many of them. Um, he's still doing a lot of damage here. A lot more pikemen streaming out of this barracks. This barracks alone has uh, made a lot of units for ASM. Actually caused a lot of havoc for Migo. As you can see, Migo on 280. Uh, score right now and uh, maybe Shelly is even going to have an advantage above him but a lot of Curvaceers out for Tabin and those Trellets are all going down and there's really nothing they can do against that uh, yeah this is <laughs> this is a massacre this is a massacre if you look at the military unit population they are now twice they got twice the military unit population ASM is still out on the map with a lot of units as you can see longbowmen pikemen but a big batch of goons like these or curious like these should be able to take out all of this and those buildings just because those units are very powerful and uh, I'm not quite sure if they're able to deal with this I think maybe finally after 30 minutes we're going to see an end to this game um, I really don't see them being possible to take on this army with just pikemen and longbowmen. I mean, they may be able to, able to repel it or maybe even to kill it, but cost effectively is going to be another story. A lot of longbowmen added from Mego as well, which are a very uh, strong addition to goons and cuirassiers. This is basically the perfect combination of units. Longbowmen, cuirassiers and goons all upgraded very highly. Uh, military drummers and infantry breastplate as well. And this is going to be a very good fight for Tevin if they can micro it well. Looks like Mego so far just walking and not really shooting anything at all. Um, I mean they have to micro well and make sure they have a good position but once they have that they can definitely do the damage here and uh, I'm not quite sure how they can repel. ASM is still running around with some pikemen adding more petards going into the town center uh, <laughs> of Mega but looks like Chelly finally calling the GG here. Never mind saying never mind maybe because this town center is going down but it uh, looks like <laughs> The, he's saying never mind. He wants to stay in the game a little bit longer. Town center on 100 HP. Maybe he didn't have enough petards or they bucked out. Town center left on 100 HP after four p <laughs> after four petards already uh, bashed themselves against it. Chelly asking about some lag. Well, there have been lag spikes all throughout the game. Um, looks like Ace and Chelly maybe even be able to hold it. But once again, the question is: Are they actually going to uh, have a backup plan after they repelled this big scary armor? army from Tebben. Even Migo is now uh, going to the fourth age and looks like Chelly and ASM are nowhere going near that uh, anytime soon. ASM's army here in the south is going to be uh, annihilated as well. Another petard going to be added against the town center but town center already being repaired. He's adding more <laughs> Okay, so while this fight is going on, uh, ASM is adding more <laughs> artillery foundries forward, probably to spam petards, but another barracks for Migo going up right in front of it, right next to it, and uh, Curaceers from Tebben going forward as well. Now ASM is calling the GG, the Curaceers taking out those artillery foundries, and it looks like it's now finally over after 34 minutes. Good game, guys. Well. <laughs> that was a very interesting, uh, very interesting first game, but uh, looks like it's come to an end. The Supreme Economy from Tebben with the very upgraded units, the Curaceers and the Goons that he has, uh, along with the powerful Longbowmen from the British players, are just too devastating against uh, the, the crushed Russian economy that is on pl plans. Uh, and mills and uh, well ASM holding out very well but in the end uh, couldn't uh, stand it alone we had miscommunication on the GG looks like maybe they didn't want to uh, be out just yet but uh, there in the end they definitely had lost the game and the first game of this best of five goes to team Tebben and Migo congratulations guys and uh, well in a minute we should be going into the second game let me just drink a glass of water and I will be back with you
Ladies and gentlemen, I am back. I just chucked down an entire bottle of water. Um, but I should be ready to go into the next game now. So, very uh, exciting back and forth. Well, not quite sure if you can call it back and forth, but interesting first game for sure. Now seeing the GG's in the chat. And uh, we have to pick first now. Okay, so it looks like they're not entirely sure on the rules. Players were alternate in locking their civilization first, with a player from the team that won game one locking first. Followed by a player from the losing team, then a second player from the winning team, lastly a second player from the losing team. Yeah, so they have to alternate the picking. First, either Tebben or Miko picks a Sif, then Chelly or Azamk, then the other player from Tebben and Miko, and then the other player from Chelly and Azamk. And then all four of them have picked a uh, Sif. In the best of five, a team may only use a civilization only one time. So we're going to see a lot of different civilizations. Very interesting. I like that. I like seeing different matchups. What a funny game. Yeah, definitely a funny game, guys. <laughs> Very exhausting, though. I uh, was not. I was actually preparing for like uh, an eight minute game where Russia just pushed out um, uh, very early on and um, shipped some units. And then, you know, a British uh, comes in with pipemen and longbowmen, and the game just ends after a few minutes because French couldn't age. But uh, a 34 minute game, which uh, was very exciting. Okay, looks like uh, they're m trying to pick Sifs now. Migo just locked in India. Okay. Then Chelly picked Aztecs, and now Tebben has to pick. Um, so India and Aztecs already two more aggressive civilizations, so to say. Russia now added by Tebben. Okay, so maybe we're finally going to see that eight minute game that, uh, well, that I wanted since, uh, well, India can uh, do quite some late game stuff with Karnimara and with Fast Fortress, Fast Industrial, whatever. But, um, I mean, Russia and Aztecs, I think in their core, and maybe even India, are just more aggressive civs. And on Cascade range, that's definitely the way to go, right? I mean, it's a very low hunt map. And there's something like a choke in the center because of the water ponds. So being aggressive is definitely a very good strategy here. And uh, that's why they're probably picking, uh, well, those yellow sifts. No, <laughs> I mean the aggressive sifts. Um, Tabin has to lock sif. Yeah, so Tabin has to lock a sif. Uh, Chelly and Migo already locked it in. He looks like sec bath, so it looks like he's going to take a bath quickly. Uh, of course, after a game, you may be a little bit stressed out, especially if it's such a long game. So he may be able to take a bath for a bit. And uh, after that, he will be back. Now, he's probably going to the bathroom just to, uh, just for a minute. And uh, after that, he will have his civilization ready. He will have some nice shower thoughts and... Uh, he will have decided on his civilization and Tebben can pick then. Probably they are now in the chat talking to each other. Okay, what do you pick if he picks Russia? What do you pick if he does that? So uh, probably quite a tense moment for them. So let's just give them a minute to decide. And uh, once that's uh, done, we will hop into the second game. Meanwhile, let's turn on a little bit of Age of Empires. The Rise of Rome music. 
to accommodate us while we wait for them to pick. Tappen! Looks like Tappen has locked his civilization. He's greened up, which is basically locking in. Okay, I'm playing the civilization. Um, th this is it. I've decided, and uh, the other team can pick now. ASAM. Are you going to lock Germany or not? That is the question we have before us today. And we give him a second to decide as well. Of course, in a 2 versus 2, there are a lot of different matchups. And they have to think about all of them when deciding a civilization. So, uh, should uh, wait for a minute. Meanwhile, let's see if anything is happening in the chat. Um, Best of five, yeah, it's going to be a long series, uh, perhaps, so definitely a very interesting one. He's asking, do team games not last a long time? Well, sometimes they end, end after a few minutes, but uh, they definitely can go on for a long time. I wait for my consultant to come back. Looks like Azam is in the need for some Somali tactics. Um, G's to E's is now here and he says what's the score it's 1 to 0 for team Tabin and Migo for this team right here so 1 to 0 we're only in one game so you have all the time to catch up um, putting out the India yeah definitely ship units and Ace Nootka interesting one there are native trade posts here on this map in uh, some good spots and um, since it's a very low hunt map and a generally a map where being aggressive is rewarded it's not always a bad idea to add native units just to get out even more units even faster and just rush down your opponent so uh, maybe we will see some native action take a bath says robo that's a new excuse <laughs> no not new for age of Empires 3 definitely uh, i f believe it was samwise 12 who once said sack bath no i'm not quite sure if it was him but uh it was uh, a, f a player, a famous player in a tournament who said sack bath. And he just needed to go to the bathroom. But of course, you may be thinking, okay, he's actually going to take a bath. But uh, looks like he's not doing that. Okay, they all have got their unique civs. Russia, India, French and Aztecs. So we are ready to go into the second game. Just one more chuck of water and I'm going to click in. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, looks like they have to green up first and uh, maybe give them a minute to decide on ASAM civilization. If there are any issues with the sound or video, please tag me in the chat and tell me. Um, if you're wondering what this donation bar is right here, um, let's see if I can... Yeah, there it is. Um, all the donations are going to watch the ESOC event, so none of the donation money is going to me or um, directly to any of the staff or to the players. It's going to the events, so uh, in the end it's going to be uh, for a prize pool for the next event we have. So um, that is where your money is going, so if you choose to donate, a moderator can probably give you a link in the chat and you can choose um, if you want to support us that way. Of course you can also subscribe, there are a lot of subscribe subscribers yeah, in the chat right now so i want to welcome them all ladies and gentlemen clicking into the second game here of chelly and asm versus tabin and the migo going to be played on cascade range and we are maybe going to see a very aggressive game right here maybe a long game uh, like last one but uh, definitely a very interesting one i like cascade range in team games just because being aggressive is a little bit more rewarding when you can work together but uh, in one versus one, I find it uh, well a little bit irritating to play on sometimes, just because uh, it's so low hunt and uh, yeah, you're constantly getting raided. Okay, um, well, somebody says it's not a low hunt map. Well, it, it, I mean, objectively, it's one of the maps with the lowest amount of hunt on it. So in that regard, it is a low hunt map. But uh, you could also argue that it's still enough to do whatever you want. So uh, maybe you shouldn't go into too much detail. But it's one of the maps with the lowest hunt on it. Let's uh, let's put it that way. So the treasures here. Very 
not too special. <laughs> so basically all the treasures here are 50 resources or less. So that's not a lot. Most of the time you see big treasures like 90 wood, which is very powerful, but uh, none of them on this map. The, uh, there are a lot of beaver treasures like this, or muskrat rats, for just 30 coin or 40 coin or maybe even 20 coin. And there are some bigger ones with a treasure guardian, uh, like 40 wood here, or maybe 50 foot here. But uh, in the end, they're not too interesting and um, there shouldn't be any treasure contentions or not a lot. Um, but they're definitely going to scout them out and take as many of these small ones as they can. India is very good for that of course since they have two heroes. So he can take out this uh, grizzly bear for 40 wood here. Meanwhile take out a grizzly bear for 40 wood here. So going to have a total of 80 wood because he's got the two heroes to scout around with. So that's a good advantage for Migo for the Indian player. Taban taking a 40 uh, wood treasure here as well. Some 20 coins on the map, 50 coin being picked up by ASAMP. I mean, all in all, it's just, there are some contentions maybe, but uh, in the end, it's so small in resources that it shouldn't influence the game too much. Not a 40 wood being picked up here. In the end, I think Mego is uh, so far very happy with what he picked up. And Tevin getting 40 wood as well. I think wood is the best treasure to take here, except maybe 50 foot is good as well since it helps your age up time so um, yeah maybe uh, maybe the food treasures are actually better but uh, once again all of them have got those treasures as you can see here I'm scrolling through the chat through the chat logs and as you can see they have got like like 20 of those small treasures already and there's still uh, there's still like five left on the map so uh, a lot of those uh, small ones okay um, fire bit by Chelly, uh, dancing with his priest to get some experience. Azam uh, doing early hunting dogs for some economic boost. Migo just gathering food with all his villagers. No villager going forward for him yet. Oh, there it is. Okay, so he's going to build a forward wonder. I think something we should expect. Azam positioning a scout right in front of the town center to actually see. Um, oh, I hope they didn't see that flare. Because I mean their team. Well, anyway, um, ASM is sending a scout right in front of uh, their base to see any forward villagers. But it looks like he is has missed this villager. So uh, he has not actually seen it. And uh, is not going to know where this wonder is being placed. Um, maybe Chelly is going to walk past this with his hero or his cougar. But uh, it's going to be hard to spot. But of course, from the Indian player, you should... Oh, let me update the score. Guys, you should say in the in the chat that it's the wrong uh, score. Uh, just tag me at either Holland and uh, tell me, and uh, then I can fix it. So I will be watching the chat from time to time. Um, Agra Fort going up for India. It's uh, to be expected, of course, since uh, well, they're going to be aggressive, and everyone knows it probably. So. Uh, well, it's to be expected that Russia sends some villages forward, and so does India, and so does the Aztecs player. The only player that doesn't have a villager forward is Azem. He has a hero forward, and he's going to make Nutkas here. And uh, that's going to be interesting. Maybe we see Mesa Halton from Chelly and Nutka from uh, Azem. That's going to be an interesting combination. Let's see how it plays out. Blockhouse going up in the back of this fort. Of course, this fort is going to tank the most damage, so it's good to have that in front. Um, a cougar died here, but now at least Chelly knows um, where the forward base is from Team Tabin. Tonight we dine in hell, says <laughs> Chelly's hero. Okay, let's see if he can make that through and send the other team to hell. And looks like <laughs> Mego going... <coughs> Going straight for this trade post. And maybe those Nutka are even going to take down those elephants if they're not too careful. As of course you can see here in the scoreboard that Team Chelly has got a trade post. And everyone can see that. Even the enemy team. So uh, everyone knows that ASM has those Nutkas. And uh, he was probably just counting out which trade post he took. 
um, looks like he's actually going for another one now and he's going to train the Klamaths or maybe do the upgrades of them. Um, Miko going to try and do some damage here with his um, elephants but of course those powerful Nootkas are going to take down those heroes very quickly should they come in contact. Blockhouse is going up in Tevin's base but uh, I think Azam could have prevented that just by walking into Tevin's base a little bit more but... Uh, Looks like not able to do that right away. Two Puma out for Chelly. Not sure where he's going with that. He should probably be defending his base since uh, five Cossacks are coming out for uh, Tabin and going forward here. Um, eight Nootkas are going back to his base. Another four being added and he's now on 12. I think that's maybe even the maximum amount of Nootkas you can make. One villager for ASM going down. Others are going into the town center quickly so he shouldn't lose any more of them. Uh, let's take a quick look at the build limit Nootkas. Doesn't actually say any build limit. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Looks like all the Nootkas now come forward and going to try and take down this Agra Fort. Some Sepoy are going down for um, Tabin, though. Well, for Migo. And maybe even Stralis are going to come out of that blockhouse for Tabin. So I'm not quite sure if they can take out an entire fort, but so far he's took a lot of damage already on 2k HP. And it definitely is go time now for Team Tabin if they want to save this fort. Very interesting. Meanwhile, some Puma here scattered in ASM's base. This uh, this fort is definitely going down right now. He's just going to sacrifice everything he has to take it down. And it looks like 150 HP and now it is gone. 320 XP for ASM, which is uh, huge. It's maybe even... Yeah, that's like more than half a shipment. So uh, that's a good thing for him as well and definitely boosts their... Uh, their speed a little bit. Another blockhouse going off for Tabin. Is it's third already? One in his base and two here. But of course he did send 700 wood. So uh, he's got enough wood to pump out a lot of blockhouses. So what is Asim going to do now? He's got the Klamets. Okay, he's got the Klamets. I was wondering if he, is he going to make the riflemen's they're basically like skirmishers, a little bit lower range though, but uh, they should do good against Sepoy and Gukra as well. And uh, yeah, looks like he's going to train them and uh, going to take out his villager which was building a consulate. No consulate going up from Migo. Uh, Nutka going into cover mode as well to take less damage and uh, Asamk is probably going to win this fight happening here. Meanwhile, uh, Mesa Haltens and some Puma against uh, some musketeers from Tabin and again they're going to make an efficient trade here. They're going to make a very efficient trade and uh, yeah I think they should definitely be able to get a good advantage out of this. Uh, another villager was sent from Migo to finish the consulate. The consulate is now done and I'm expecting the three gardener hussars for, from the Ottoman consulate to pop out. But is it going to be in time? There's still a lot of anti cavalry units, the Nootkas, a lot of anti-infantry units, the Klamets and Mesa Halton. And just not too many units by Team Tamban. Some more strategies are now out. So, uh, and now with the Gardeners. Okay, so maybe they are able to push back here. Let's see if those Nootkas are going to focus on the Gardeners or if they're just going to focus on taking down that barracks and just sieging it down. Um... Okay, um, let's see. Yeah, it looks like uh, more uh, coyotes being added by uh, Chelly as well. Fi he's only sent military shipments back to back here in the second age uh, after the three warrior priests. Barracks is now down by all the siege from the Nootka warriors. Mesa Hotten's going forward. Coyote trying to find a way forward too. Um, those strategies are not going to live too long. And another barracks is added by Miko, but just behind those blockhouses. I'm not quite sure if that's a good idea. If you want to rebuild, I think you should just rebuild built in his base because this is a very dangerous spot and uh, ASM uh, can potentially just run forward and take that barracks down as well. Um, this blockhouse may not even live that long anyway uh, since those Nootka are all in the face of this blockhouse and uh, they are doing a lot of siege damage as you can see 34 siege damage a few more hits and this blockhouse is down as well team 3 villagers is now out for Chelly and uh, the economy should, should be uh, on par of the other team as you can see 62 to 61 in terms of economic unit population ASAM just sent a um, Native upgrades, team improved native harvest. Tevin has resigned. There it is, the GG. As I said, a quick game on this map, Cascade Range. And now it's 1 to 1. Chelly and ASM bringing it back. 
uh, to a one to one with their native plus uh, well basically more native rush against the Indian and Russia player GG let's take a look at the military unit population I turn on the team statistics since that should be most interesting and as you can see here Team Chelly was just a lot earlier with their mass and uh, this fight was uh, <laughs> well very bad for them uh, <laughs> it was for Tamil and Miko where they lost uh, basically all their strelets and uh, here again and meanwhile Chelly, Chelly and ASM just kept making enough units to uh, keep the upper hand rush down all the buildings and uh, made this into a quick victory Okay, I am back again, ladies and gentlemen, all 130 of you. I want to thank you all for watching and for being here in the chat with me, watching these uh, pro players battle it out in this 2 versus 2. Looks like I'm invited to the third game here now. And uh, let's just see what map it is. I think it's Deccan. I'm pretty sure this is going to be Deccan. And uh, it's going to be interesting. Let's see. There it is, Deccan, Manchuria, Mendocino. So, Deccan is a very interesting map because you start with a lot more starting crates. I believe you get... Okay, I'm just going to look it up before I say something that isn't true. I think 300 food. I'm going to quickly make a search here and see the starting crates for Deccan. <laughs> Yeah, you start with an extra 300 food, 200 wood, and 200 coin. And that's on top of your normal crates. Yo, so you start out with 700 extra resources, which is which is a lot. It's Yes. <laughs> Looks like Shelly has no idea what's going on. <laughs> Okay, so it's a very interesting um, map because you start out with a lot more uh, resources. So everything is going to be a little bit faster. You can age up with less villagers. You can uh, you can rush with more units earlier on. You can claim the map earlier on. And in the center of the map are a lot of powerful treasures and a lot of resources. So getting the map and getting all those trade posts is also very important. As you can see here, three trade posts on the left, three on the right, and a lot of cows and animals and mines in the center. So getting control of this map is very important. But then again, you can also just wall up and there are still a lot of resources in your base. So um, yes, this should be the good Deccan. No, it should be the normal version of the map as far as I'm concerned. It's not being fixed. I believe this is the original Deccan from uh, Re-Entertainment. Um, just with the U, uh, UI slapped on front of it. That's why it says UX Deccan, UIX Deccan. And not something like ESOC Deccan or Fixed Deccan or whatever. So, yeah, it's going to be Deccan and that's going to be interesting. Uh, and maybe we'll see some more Asian Sifts because of that or more native Sifts. Since they can make a good use of those earlier resources by uh, aging up earlier with their wonders. Um, let's see. Yes, I'm pretty sure this is the same as Re Deccan. I'm going to quickly confirm it. Well, I'm waiting for confirmation from that from <laughs> the staff. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not a normal crate start and it's just a high resources start as you would expect. 
So, uh, let's wait for confirmation on that, and meanwhile, we're just going to let them pick their civilization, since uh, that should take a minute as well, as it always does. Meanwhile, let's turn on a little bit more Ace of Empires 1, Rise of Rome music, just in the background. Okay, looks like they just want to play. Um, okay, looks like it's going to be the redecan, the original one, the OG. So. Uh, Going to be a high crate start, and they have to pick their sifts accordingly to that. Um, Chami picking Spain and has clicked in, has got it confirmed, and now Migan, Miko, or Chamin has to pick. Migo or Tavern are probably um, having a little bit of difficulty picking their civilization. They have to think about it for a bit. Uh, Chelly has logged in already, so he's going to play the Spanish civilization here. Um, Spanish, of course, they are aging relatively quickly on this map. With a lot of uh, extra resources, they can also make a lot of trade posts, which definitely um, is good for the, their economy and their speed, but I'm not quite sure if they can get map control early enough to do all the damage they want. Uh, as to Germany, they're also very fast. Um, we've got a Yulan out because they can get it for free with their shipments. So maybe that's a little bit of a better pick. At least it's what I would personally like better. But uh, if Chelly is comfortable with the civilization, that's very important. Another Germany. Now ASM has clicked in with Germany as well. And now Migo has to pick a civilization and of course he cannot choose British or French or India or Russia so a lot of civilizations he cannot pick anymore so once again every <coughs> every team can only pick each civilization once in the entire series so in a best of five they cannot play any duplicate civilization, even if they haven't played it themselves, but their teammate has. So it looks like he's going for Dutch, and they are going to click in. They have to go team 1 just in case, should be good to get it all sorted out. Then we have team 1, team 1, team 2, team 2, and a team 3 for me. Ladies and gentlemen, looks like we are going to click into this. We're going to click into this game almost. Yeah, there they are, team one. Ladies and gentlemen, Deccan is on. As you know, a lot of first lieutenants play Deccan games endlessly. Thousands of them every day. Well, every month I, I get. But, uh, and now we're going, finally going to see some high level players playing Deccan. As you can see, Colonels, Colonels playing it. <laughs> it's very interesting and I have to take one more sip of water before I go into this game UIX Deccan So both team has both teams have the German civilization which uh, should indicate that they're all going to rush for those straight posts early on there are three on the top and three on the bottom of the map and um, 
I, I assume all of them are going to the center trade post actually early on just to uh, get out the most trade post they can. Um, what else can we see? Dutch probably wants a trade post as well, or maybe an early bank or an early market. And of course, Spanish also likes their trade posts early on. So as you can see, there you go. There they go. <laughs> Temen going to the south, uh, as so is Chelly, and ASEM and Migo going to the north. And as you can see, Migo go for the center trade post. So he's able to take this one and then later this one as well. Whereas ASEM is going to have his trade post earlier on, but it's uh, not going to be able to take a second one. Both the players here are going for the trade post they first see. 50 wood right next to the trade post and 50 wood right next to it as well. And that's very powerful as well. And I assume both of them are going to take uh, that treasure once they have completed their trade posts. Migo actually not going for a trade process at all. Or maybe, yeah, okay. He was just gathering some crates and uh, trading maybe some gold for wood. Um, so he didn't uh, take this trade post rise. <coughs> he didn't take a trade post right away, but he was able to take it in time. Um, a dog from Chelly running around trying to gather some cows. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, cows, I believe. Uh, maybe 12 of them are on the map here in the center and uh, they can boost your economy later in the colonial age or maybe even to age up faster to the colonial age Chelly's uh, hero is idle for a little bit he took that 50 wood the score is 1 to 1 as you can see in the top of the screen here the score currently is correct um, more cows being brought back by Migo his envoy scouted out some of them and I'm going to see to click on all units for a bit as you can see two cows for ASM and two for Chelly six for Migo and none for Tabin so so far uh, Migo has got a slight advantage but it looks like there's still some more left here in the center and it can go either way for now let's go back to ship and send to see what they're going to send first it's probably just going to be three villagers for every one of them and of course the two settler wagons as the equivalent of three villagers um, for the German players Migo already aging up to the second age he's got his market up is doing hunting dogs um, and is now chopping wood and gathering food to get his first bank up so he's going to be early in the second uh, second age before all of the others but Teddy is uh, not that far behind him uh, is the Spanish civilization and is also already aging up the German players will be the latest ones aging up Thank you, Human, for your kind words in the chat. It's hard to cast alone sometimes, uh, especially when there's so much going on in a team game, but uh, I'm having fun. And it's at least uh, some interesting games, and that helps a lot with uh, getting some good casts. Tabin going for the second trade post. So, of course, as a German player, he wants as much experience points as possible going for that second one. Looks like ASM scouting out here two forward villagers from Chelly. But of course, they are on the same team, so that doesn't really matter. Um, Chelly going forward with his two villagers, and he's going to build, uh, well, probably a barracks uh, very early on to try and uh, rush down the enemy. Tamman is walling up, but he's walling up this side, which is, to me, not too... I, I don't think it's necessary to wall that at all, since it's very unlikely Chelly or Azamek is going to build a barracks here and rush from the south. It's much more likely they're either going to rush in here or rush through here, but this is still undefended, so uh, I, I would say it's a priority to close this gap, and uh, this one is not really that... Uh, that's important right now. Migo also walling up is going to wall up the the big gap as first, like I said, and probably not going to wall this entire thing since it will cost him a lot of wood to entirely close this gap. Chelly building his barracks as forward as he can. There's a range around the town center where you cannot build buildings, but I assume that the range is just stopping right here and Chelly is building right next to that. So uh, building it as close as he can. Trying to block this wall with his villager. Let's see if he succeeds. Yes, it looks like he's succeeding for now. Tevin has to find another way to build this wall and uh, Chelly going forward with his villager again. Tevin running around the mine. Let's see if he can actually make this mine now next. Looks like this villager is trying to block it out and it's actually 
actually doing great. Crossbowman now going forward and maybe even taking down this villager. Actually doing a lot of damage, but the villager already got great code. So this villager it might not go down. Yeah, it goes down, but two Yulan are coming out. Trying to take out the crossbowman. Five pikemen going forward for ASAMP now and repelling those two Yulan. And this was a successful start for ASAMP and Shelly already. Um, not losing any units just yet um, and taking out a villager and of course blocking this wall which is uh, very good for that team uh, Miko is making uh, barracks in his base Tabin has got a stable in his base so they are able to make skirmishers and Yulan it's a good combination of units but Chelly and Azam are just way way quicker um, let's see if their spikemen are actually going to siege down a town center I assume they will go for a houses and then for a stable and maybe then for a market and not already go for the town center since there's a very low chance you can actually siege it down Okay, a house already going down. Uh, let's take a look at the population for Tabin. As you can see, he's already population capped. There go out eight crossbowmen and two Yulan. And that's a powerful shipment from the German civilization. And uh, he may be able to repel the enemy with that. Maybe Minutemen are coming out as well. But it looks like Tabin hasn't got the resources in his back bank to call Minutemen. He has to gather a little bit more gold and food to call those units. Um, ASM now going forward with some Yulan as well. Of course, from his shipments, he gets Yulan also. Um, the tower is up for ASM as well, and uh, he can quickly send out those military uh, military shipments and uh, get them into the fight very quickly after sending them. Um, Ada had too much water, yeah. <laughs> I definitely did have a little bit too much. Um, when I was trying to pronounce that one word at the start of the series, but um, for now it is working out. And it looks like ASAMP is sitting down the stable with his pikeman mass. It's got some Yulan to back him up as well. Hero might go down here. Uh, Tevin is trying to find his position um, with his Yulan. Um, and of course, Miko is uh, adding in from the north with uh, skirmishers and an eight pikeman shipment. Uh, Middleman now out for Tevin. And maybe this is finally go time for Team Tevin to push out. Three double cylinders sent as well. And they may be able to repel the enemy now here. At least for a little bit. Miko sending team spice trade, which gives the team, I think, 15% upgrade on hunting and berry bushes. Yeah, there it is. 10% uh, to hunting. Okay, 10% to hunting, 50%, 15 to berry bush scattering. So it does help, but 10% is not a lot. And I think Miko could have sent uh, better shipments. Maybe 700 food or 700. Well, it doesn't have 700 food or gold. Okay, yeah, so maybe even four villagers would be better then. But, uh, okay, I guess uh, this works since it's for the entire team. Um, so, it looks like Migo is now in a very good spot here, as you can see in the score. He's uh, getting a good economy. Four banks. He's got four banks and a lot of cows ready to gather. So, um... I think the clock is ticking for Team ASM Cancelli. As you can see, reflected in the economic unit population, banks are also calculated in there with, uh... uh yeah, a value of four. So... Um... So yeah, the, I think the clock is ticking for Team ASAM and, and Chelly just because their economy is not as strong as that of Team Tamman, well mostly of Migo and uh, they're also getting uh, raided here quite soon if ASAM is not going to take out that raid with two of his Yulan himself. So they have to do some damage here early on and um, maybe do a little bit more damage than they have done right now. Uh, Outpost now going up for Tabin, and uh, that is going to make it even harder to um, push into. Aesop is going to catch his raid with two of his Yulan, but two more are being added from Tabin, and he should be able to take out those two Yulan again, uh, winning that little competition going on in Aesop's base there. Um, okay, so I think Tabin are. are I think I would rather be in Tevin and Miko's position right now. I mean, uh, Miko is not in a great economic position, but uh, Miko is just so strong and skirmishers in H2 is uh, very powerful to have and uh, very powerful, especially against just crossbowmen and pikemen. Ace I'm taking out the villager, uh, which does help him get back a little bit, but uh, of course one villager is not enough to turn the tide. Uh, he's going to take out one of the trade posts with a lot of his pikemen, but that does mean all of those units here are fairly unprotected, and I'm not quite sure if Chelly should actually push out right now against the, well, pretty big army of Team Tevin. 
I'm going to try and take out one of the Yulan, but uh, oh, those Yulan um, are actually going towards the treasure uh, that Miko is taking. Three, 360 food. That's a really good boost to the food count of Tabon, um of Miko. I mean, and she's already now in the third age, and uh, I'm not quite sure if Chelly, Chelly, and Asim can do enough damage now. Um, I mean, they do have the military advantage, so if they push out right now, maybe they do have a window to to break the enemy. But uh, as this game goes on, and as Miko is getting so powerful and getting those H3 shipments out, it should be really hard for Team Asam Kincheli to stay in this, into this game. Tabin is now also aging up. Asam is getting ready to age up, as you can see. But Chelly, once again, just like the first game in the series, nowhere near aging up, not gathering any gold. And well, maybe he can send 700 gold. Gold. He's got it in his deck, but um, that will take another few minutes uh, to actually grab that uh, shipment in and get enough food. Um, Nine Reuter um, is the first third aid shipment from Migo, but uh, those Reuter actually getting caught by the pikemen and uh, Asim making a good trade here, I think. Getting a good efficient trade. Um, but skirmishers are now veteran for Migo, they auto upgraded once he got to the third age. And um, yeah, it's going to be hard for Chelly just to take on the skirmisher mass with just crossbowmen and pikemen since crossbowmen of course have 16 range against 20 of uh, the skirmishers and uh, I think Migo, Migo is in a fine position right here and uh, he should be happy with how it's going. There's some pikemen left for Asam with some Yulan to accompany them. But uh, is that going to be enough to take out this entire army? I'm not quite sure if it's going to be enough. Asam is now 8 stop but of course so is Tabin and those 3rd age units and upgrades should start rolling out. Meanwhile Chili still in the 2nd age with just Archaic units. Just crossbowmen, pikemen and uh, skirmishers just do so well against them. Meanwhile, pikemen from Migo um, sitting down a barracks as well. And I think all in all they uh, should be in a good position. Some answers from Chelly are now out. But uh, they still uh, have got Reuters and pikemen left. And uh, those are enough to take out those few hussars. I'm doing some raiding here in the base of Migo, but Reuters coming in to save the day and uh, probably just snipe them down without Pikeman being able to do damage. Uh, should he? Yeah, he's actually microing them. Um, Tabin, five war wagons are now out for him, which is uh, very powerful. It's 15 population uh, of just sheer anti cavalry or just anti unit in general. 52 range, uh, 42 range attack is quite powerful. Um, and I think Tabin and Migo are in a fine position here and I think they should be able to win the game from here on. They're probably going to take out all of these buildings. Um, they don't have a lot of seats but they really don't They don't need to since uh, time is still on their side. Um, Chelly has got some villagers running away but uh, some of the war wagons from Tabin are going to spot them and take them out. Um, Asam going back with his villagers as well to try and not get caught um, adding some Yulan making some skirmishers but ASM doesn't have a new military building just yet it doesn't have any military building right now um, Chelly adding two more barracks in front of the town center uh, he's got some Rodoleros out now seven Rodolero it says six but uh, the shipment has been changed to seven in this Aesop patch um, and Thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is <laughs> this is huge. A thousand wood has been shipped by ASAM to the forward tower, and now that tower is down, and this map is completely controlled by Team Tamen. So he's going to pick up a thousand wood, which is huge. ASAM not having that is is big already, but Tamen actually getting that wood makes it even worse for them, and he's uh, able to add at least one town center and maybe even a second with all the wood he's gathered so far. Azamk is now pushing out to Miko's base, but uh, well, Miko is just going to send back his units, his uh, good composition of Reuter and Skirmishers, and um, going back into this game, uh, into his town. Let's see where he's actually going. I think he should split off some of his Reuters to just take out the Yulan from Azamk, since uh, he can do a lot of damage uh, uh, raiding, uh, raiding stuff right here. Um, and. 
Okay, it looks like Tevin even ending a third Townsend here. Yeah, so he took out a he took out a lot of villages here from Tevin, and uh, they are actually ahead now in villager population. But still, in terms of military units, they just don't have any answer to this. Uh, the Yulan and the war wagons are just a very powerful combination against those relatively weak H2 units. And this skirmisher mass, there's just no answer to this, and there are no Yulan on the field nearby for ASAM. Those Yulan here that were raiding are getting caught by the Royal and Chelly is just basically dead here by all those units swarming into his base and if you look at the score uh, you can just see that team Chelly ASM is just so far behind that it's really hard for them to catch up at this point um, maybe if Migo deletes all his units they still have a chance but uh, I think this is basically over uh, for them uh, unfortunately uh, yeah, more Chelly Hussars coming in to raid, but still they've got the Reuters, they've got the speed and the range to take out any cavalry. And okay, they're losing another villager for Tevin, but he's got three town centers up in just a few seconds. And uh, losing a villager is not as bad as losing so many Hussars. And now more villagers going down by Aesang here. Chelly has resigned. There it is. GG221 for Team Migo Tevin. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, um, so first we saw a 34 minute game, then a 9 minute game. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. They uh, they had a decent... Uh, they had a decent push here in the start and uh, did some damage against all the houses and buildings here. But uh, yeah, once Migo started to have a lot of skirmishes out and he got the range advantage, it was really... Uh, really hard for them to get back into the game that was game number three so now it's two to one for team Migo Tabin and should they win the next game then they advance to the next round and team Azam Chelly will be out of this tournament since it's a best of five so the first one to reach three wins is going to be victorious let's see if we can make it to the fifth game or not once we go into the next lobby. Whew, so, very exciting game once again. And uh, very tense to, uh, to try and catch everything that's going on on the map. Since most of the time in a 1 versus 1 there's already 3 things going on. A raid and a big battle and some microwing of units or... Or, or villagers moving but now with with four players it's really hard to catch everything that's uh, going on um. so the fourth game so it means we already will see eight different civilizations that's uh that's a lot and uh, i actually kind of like it maybe it's hard for the players to choose a good matchup but i personally like seeing so many different matchups and uh, especially in shorter series like that it's uh, good to have some variety ladies and gentlemen i see the donation button um command being added to the chat yeah as you can see if you uh, if you chat excl exclamation mark donate you can get a link to the donate page on Streamlabs, and you can give us a donation but if you want to support us in a different way you can also just um, subscribe to the channel and support us in that way but I have to say it and I keep saying that and even if all of you have heard it I will keep saying it all the donation money is going towards the prize pools for the tournament. So it's not going to me or the casters or the staff. Um, it's just going to the prize pool. Um, we also make some money through YouTube and Twitch uh, using uh, advertising money or uh, uh, bits, uh, for example. But that is going towards the server costs. We have our own forums, our own patch, um, our own 
ELO ladders where we uh, rank all the different players. You can find it all on, on our forums, by the way. Uh, also those ladders, it's all on our website and probably some helpful guy will uh, post all the relevant links in the chat. So um, yeah, that money is going towards the server costs and the rest is going towards the price pool. So you don't have to be afraid that your money is being wasted on someone's lunch or a beer but it's going to be uh, used to host these tournaments and to keep the Age of Empires community alive, the Age of Empires 3 community specifically. China! China being picked by Taban. Looks like now Chelly and Azem will have to pick another civilization and we will see what they are going to do. Um, looks like the music was actually over. We listened to 30 minutes of the Rise of Rome music soundtracks. So I just refresh the page and we're going to listen to it once again. While we're waiting for them to pick a civilization, Iroquois is now out. As you can see the map is Manchuria. Um, there's an interesting trade post uh, that is shared by both teams. It could also be um, that there are two different trade posts and both of the teams have access to one of them. And there's some water on here as well, but I have not seen water play a lot of times on here. I have seen it from Kinesi for example, but uh, I think those players, the players right here in the teams are not too too keen on playing water. At least not they're, they're not like supreme water only players like Tith and Kinesi. So, um, I would be surprised to see water play here, honestly. Looks like Iroquois has been set, so Migo has now to pick a civilization, one he has not played before. Um, Ace, time for time for China, man. Time to get an easy win, says Stream Addicted. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I don't know. Ace is definitely very good with China. He's very familiar with it, but. Um, is he able to beat Tevin's China? Uh, time will tell us. Let's see what Migo chooses first, since he is the one who has to pick next. What is the score? Uh, Ask guys here. It is two to one for Team Tevin. It's two to one and it's a best of five. So the first one to win three games is going to be the winner of this series. Looks like Mego is having some difficulty choosing what he wants to play. So let's give him some motivation by using some taunts. <laughs> let's see uh, what is if I can find the taunt package. As you know, we have a taunt package on our forums, and uh, basically it exists of uh, a lot more uh, custom-made taunts made by Wicked Cossack and various other contributors. I think Eagle Met made some as well and pays a lot or piece a lot as well. Uh, let's see if there's a list of all of them and uh, for example you have uh, this. Attack! That's just really funny. Um, <laughs> Miko picking Aztecs. Their team has not picked Aztecs yet right? No they haven't. Okay. Player one is be right back, but he has greened up, so that's interesting. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find a list in this thread with all the that says all the different taunts and what they do. Or get wrecked. Oh, get wrecked. <laughs> okay, maybe one once I click into this game and I see the map, I should say this. To be fair, uh, to be honest, I. Oh, it actually cut off. Let's uh, let's try it one more time. To be fair, uh, to be honest, I've never seen this map. I've never seen this map. <laughs> oh, this is great. Um. Maybe once we have seen some walls, we should say this. Have you seen the walls? Oh, wow, yeah. Have I seen the walls? Yeah. So many walls. 
so many walls <laughs> from Zuda Zuda. Okay, well, um, I think that should be it. Maybe, yeah, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. To the fourth game of Chelly and ASAM versus Tabin and Migo. <laughs> that introduction went perfectly. We're going to click into the fourth game here on Manchuria. And uh, it's going to be maybe the final two versus two game of this series. Um, since it's match point for Team Tabin and Migo right now. And. Uh, It's match point, so that means if they win this game, then they have won this series and they advance to the next round. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Essex and China versus Portuguese and Iroquois. And looking at it quickly, I'm not quite sure what would be the best approach here right away. Um, of course, Iroquois has got some good uh, second H capabilities by rushing, but then again, they can also do a fast fortress and play it out that way. Um, what you can also say is that Essex have good rushing capabilities, but I mean China is most most effective and most comfortable in the third age, and so is Portuguese. So it's not like I immediately say, "Hey, they're going to do rushing or 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 going a fast fortress." It's going to be interesting, and I like that. I like seeing what they come up with, and I like being surprised. Um, Fifty wood being picked up immediately by. Both ASM and by Tabon. And meanwhile, looks like Migo is going for an 85 wood treasure here. And Chelly still has to scout around and has to find something uh, to pick up. Let's see what is actually happening here. Both of them have got one of their friends with them, a Black Panther and a Lion. But no treasure being picked up right away. Looks like they're just going to do a little bit of a contention here and uh, going to fight each other a little bit. As you can see this trade post route, it goes from this part of the map to the center of the map and then to the north. So it is shared basically. It's really hard for Team ASM Chelly to take this one. And it's really hard for Team Tab and Migo to take this trade post. But this trade post is up for grabs for everyone. And uh, maybe they are going to uh, fight over it later in the game. But for now, at least Tabin is taking one quick trade post in the early game and um, going to secure some good experience for him once he has reached the second age. 30 XP picked up by ASM. It looks like the treasure or the hero contention in the center of the map is now over. Um, let's see. Aztecs is scouting around. Of course, there are a lot of yaks on this map, and you want to get those good treasures, but you also want to get some yaks since uh, they can give you a nice food boost. Uh, well, if you want to age up a little bit quicker or just want to get out a little bit more units. So, yeah, there's that. 85 wood being picked up by Chelly and ASM. ASM already got quite a good uh, amount of treasures, and they may be able to, uh, to get a, a trade post up during transition just by. Uh, by getting all these wood treasures. Who is the host? Says Pragen. That's me, Ida Holland. So Ida and then Holland. That's me. I'm the host, I, I guess. And uh, I'm talking to you right now. It says my name right there. So, looks like um, ASM just sent advanced trading post. So he's adding a trade post for just 120 wood. So he's even got wood left since he's got so many wood treasures. And he's going to add this trade post and probably even this one as well. Since, well, only building one trade post is not really worth it with advanced trade post. But if you make two of them, it already starts to be a little bit more, uh, more like it. Ex especially for Portuguese. Um, Oh yeah, as Brooke says, I'm not the host of this entire tournament. I'm just the caster, the streamer right now. Uh, Ishoc, the well, the community is hosting this tournament and uh, is uh, making the prize pools and making up the rules and getting the stream up and running, making up uh, who's going to play, etc., etc. Um, Tabin going forward with his hero. I don't think I see any forward villagers from either team right now. So maybe we're going to see some uh, fast fortress action. And not a colonial rush as we have seen so many times in this series already. Looks like Tevin building a wonder here in his base. Migo sending a villager forward to hunt. Oh, two villagers forward. 
But it's going to get scouted by Azeb, who's actually building the Zen Temple. He's going to build a natives again. And that's what the advanced trade post was for. It was not to take this entire route. It was to take some natives. And the Zen Temple, they have got Japanese warriors good against cavalry in buildings. So they're kind of like the Nootka warriors. They're melee units good against cavalry and with a high siege potential. Tabin has sent a villager forward but is going back again probably because they scouted out this native post uh, Jenny is going forward with uh, Travois as well and he's going to build a war hut Tabin is going back again and so is Mega. okay this is really hard to keep track of but uh, looks like all in all ASM has got a forward uh, trade post Chelly has got a forward war hut, and both Temen and Miko are going to build in their base. As you can see, Miko building a war hut in his base right now, and Temen is probably going to build a war academy in his base. But, shoot! Oh! Two villagers may go down here by these so high from the trade post. Um, should they not go down, there may be a possibility that ASM takes down this war hut. Looks like Miko is not even finishing the war hut. He's not even finishing it with his villagers. He's actually deleting it. Maybe going to add it in the back of his base. There it goes up again. Already a good advantage for Team Acehem. Taking some extra experience from that deleted building. And of course taking down uh, that building. So it takes even longer for Migo to get out units. No Rattans coming uh, Brook. It's not Rattan Shields right now. It's the Zen Temple with the So High. So yeah. Um, Rattan are also a possibility to get on this map? I'm not quite sure, but uh, looks like we're not going to get them. Disciples uh, are now out. Some Chukonus have been sent by Temen and um, some of the sentries. So all in all, they should be able to take out this army from Chani that he's rushing with. But is it enough to actually stop these so high from sieging down that wonder? A wonder is quite important for his... Uh, for getting some units out and getting enough out until he reaches the third age. And those so highs do a lot of siege damage. Um, Miko now finally got his warhead up. Is sending uh, 10 Mesa Haltons. Is trading units I uh, assume as well. But this wonder is definitely going down. And that's going to be uh, quite big already. And a good advantage uh, for team ASM. Um, Shelly has to go back now with his Tomahawks and with his units, but Azemk is not going back until this wonder is down. And there, as you see, uh, the wonder has been broken down, and now they're finally going to fight units again instead of just rushing down buildings. Um, let's see, Tomahawks going forward. Mesa Hauntins do well against Tomahawks, but uh, Tomahawks are beefy units in general, so they are able to hold them back for a little bit some more disciples popped out of this hero before it went down by all these so highs looks like five of the so highs going to the trade post to try and take it out maybe ace and wants to add in a third trade post or wants to add in uh, uh stagecoach the upgraded trade route um okay so this is now up no market for miko just yet no market for Taban either uh, steel traps being researched for Azam right now, 700 coin as well and uh, we have to see if he wants to age up with that or if he wants to train units since okay he has a stable so he wants to train Hussar then if he only had the native post still he probably couldn't train units that cost gold so 700 go coin would indicate an age up but he's built a stable so he's probably going to add some Hussar in later um, I'm not quite sure where, where these so high are going since there are no units for ASM on that side of the map. Just... Oh! Look at that, he's going to the treasure! A trapped construction team qualified to build war huts and stables. So if he gets this treasure, he gets a stable wagon and he gets a free stable uh, worth 200 wood. So that's a good treasure for him to pick up. And uh, it may be worth sending back some so high just for picking that up. But... Uh, because his hero is not able to defeat the treasure alone, he's on 51 HP. But looks like now, the trade post for Tevin is back up. And he's going back to take it down. Meanwhile, 
uh, Miko is getting a fairly decent amount of military units out. Nine may hold the next, and Chili is not going to uh, hold this uh, alone. So he definitely needs the help from Azam. Azam has got some hazards out now. A flamethrower actually out for Tevin. He sent the Mandarin Duck Squad. Uh, shout out to Duck. Um, so he's got a flamethrower out and a lot of chicken news, um, but they, those don't do so well against hussars. So let's see if they can actually survive for long enough. Um, the trade post might actually go down here. There are a lot of pumas uh, mixed in from Migo, and they do a lot of damage against the buildings. Uh, more, more so high uh, now in the base of Tevin. They took out the trade post and are now taking down some of the villagers here. Um, oh, a lot of tomahawks are getting caught out of position here, trying to defend that trade post, and that is working out. But losing so many Tomahawks in the process is definitely not worth it for Team Chelly. And now that trade post is still going down. And it looks like, uh, all in all, the military unit population for Team um, Tevin is very high. Of course, so highs don't count as military unit population. So you can count like another 9 for uh, Team ASAM. But is that going to be enough to hold this? Um, there are a lot of Chukunus out, a lot of Mesa Haltons, and enough Puma and uh, Kuang Pikemen to take out all the buildings they need. And uh, they're probably able to push forward uh, quite convincingly right now. Tevin even sent 9 Kuang Pikemen even more. So not going for any fortress route anytime soon but just sending those military shipments to try and push out why they'll have the advantage and uh, Chenny with his forward villagers here and Aesop with one as well is going to have to watch out for those uh, units going forward because they uh, have the potential to lose them all can your horsemen have been trained by Chenny from a forward corral um, well forward as in uh, in front of his town center but not really out on the map. Uh, some villagers going down here at the hunt, but he's going to try and raid with those five uh, Kenya horsemen, maybe taking out some villagers from Migo as well. Chukunus and Mesa Haltons and Pikemen still going forward, and they really need an answer to this soon. And uh, a few so high and a few uh, raiding hussars and uh, Kenya horsemen are probably not going to be enough to take out this entire army. Um, those hussars and Kenya horsemen don't have a lot of siege potential. Tevin even has got some pikemen back in his base to defend. But those those uh, Puma Spearmen have a lot of siege potential and they can easily take out this corral here and probably the warhead next or maybe going straight for the town center here and uh, I'm not even quite sure if they can can even defend against it and it can even save the town center. There are also Jaguar Paul Knights in there as well, doing even more siege damage. And it looks like this town center is going down. Azem is now switching to water a little bit. Um, Stanley is running around with his Tomahawks and trying to find a good position to break into. Some Sohai are running around as well. But this town center is now going down and so are all the villagers that are inside it. And that's at least seven of them. So that's a big hit to Chelly and to uh, ASM as well. And uh, going too hard for them to come back from that. Uh, can your horsemen still being effective on the map? Taking down some villagers, causing idle time, causing a distraction. But Tevin also um, running around the map here with his crunk pikemen, scaring some villagers away, taking down another upgraded trade post. It's got a high HP and it's got a small range attack, but so many pikemen have enough siege damage to take it out. Uh, looks like after the town center, the pikemen went on to kill one of the longhouses, and now two more longhouses potentially go down. And then there's not much that Chenna has got going for him. Tevin is now aging up to the third age, and okay, Asim is on water. And and he's going to have the best economy, uh, well, for now, probably. Uh, he's even pushing out here with a big Hussar badge and some crossbowmen to take out this uh, Pikeman badge. And he can probably do it and maybe even cost effectively because of the added crossbowmen. But is it going to be enough? Is this water play going to be good enough uh, to take out this menacing force that is still steaming forwards? A lot of siege potential still um, for Team Tevin. And uh, once Tevin has reached the third age, he's got even more means to take out uh, the bases of Azam and Chelly. Chelly adding in an, well, another is uh, his now first town center again uh, with some of his villagers right next to the shore so it can be defended by warships later on. But um, 
Okay, so this may be actually a good trade. ASM uh, coming in with a lot of investors here. And it's all coming down to micro. If those pipemen are going down quickly enough. Um, because if the anti cavalry from this army is gone. Then ASM can make a very good deal with this big, big Hussar badge. But it looks like... He's not comfortable with that just yet, and uh, he's running around with his Hussar. I assume two ba batches of Minutemen are coming out from the two town centers. The crossbowmen here are coming forward. He's going to snipe down the town, uh, the Puma with his town centers. He's even got colonial militia. And once anti cavalry is gone, he would just bash in his Hussar and do as much damage as he can. And there you see, there he goes with the crossbowmen, a big batch of Minutemen, and the Hussars getting all in position to take out all these. Mesa Haltons and the Chukonis. There are still pikemen left. There are Jaguar Palnites left. They do a lot of damage against cavalry. But with those added minute men and crossbowmen, there's just nothing he can do against this big, big Hussar batch. Uh, some of the Chukonis <laughs> have managed to escape. They were like, nope, I'm not even trying to fight this. It's going to be a massacre anyway. So those Chukonis are now going back to Tabin's base along with this lone flamethrower that's running around. Uh, but still, I'm questioning whether it's going to be enough if you look at the score 170 score plus 70 and 120 plus well around 70 it's it's almost the same score if you add them up and if you uh, calculate an average score but asm is just way ahead in this game um some <laughs> some ayana trying to take out a a house here but they really don't have a lot of siege damage so i'm not quite sure if uh, this is something chelly wants to do but asm uh, definitely has the means to do a lot of destructive damage with his army taking down uh, aztec's villagers with his minutemen Taking down some villagers in the back of Tevin's base uh, with his hussars. Adding in even more hussars here from the north. And it looks like they're actually calling GG. It looks like Migo has resigned here. Uh, cannot handle the pressure from Asam's hussars uh, fight. And of course, Chelly's is being annoying in the back of his base as well. Very exciting first game. And I was not expecting Asam and Chelly to be victorious here. But they managed to turn it around and turn this into a 2 2. So right now, we are on match point and the next game is going to be the Siri designing game a very exciting um, last fourth game here uh, starting with a Zen temple rush and a warhead rush into Mego space denying a warhead they definitely came back into the game when they had a big Chukunu Mesa Halton and Puma rush and even killed the town center of Chelly but once they were in ASM's base and the Hussars and the Minutemen started pouring out and ASM had a supreme economy uh, on water and on land he was managed uh, he managed to take out the armies from Tabin and Migo and they turned this game around and made it into a victory after 15 minutes ladies and gentlemen this was game number four and ASAM and Chelly were victorious once again and I will be back with you in just a minute I have to drink another sip of water ladies and gentlemen let's take a look at the timeline well we take a few minute break until the next game starts Yeah, so you can clearly see the, the very powerful position that Team Tabin has right here when they had like 90 units against 28, which is really scary to deal with. Uh, of course, some natives have to be added to this number since they don't count, count uh, for population. But still then, uh, Tabin had a supreme uh, military advantage on, uh, on the land. And as you can see in... <laughs> Um, as you can probably see in the villager population, for example, that's where Team um, Team Chelly took a big hit here when his town center got destroyed. But he still, with the sea boom in the back, he just managed to, to stay ahead. And if you look at all resources scattered, they just outgathered him by a lot. And uh, in the end, military population here went quickly down here for hill for team Tabin when ASM pushed out with his Minuteman badge and with his Hussar badge and this is where the game really flipped around and uh, there was just no more way that uh, team Tabin could win ladies and gentlemen let's see if the fifth lobby is up yet and we can go into the last game of the series created by Tim K
that's it. That's the right music. That's the one I was looking for. What is the map, Mendocino? If I'm, mm, yeah, it is Mendocino. So going to see the last game here. <laughs> looking at the chat right now, really exciting. Ace is just a god. Ace could win this himself. 200 IQ confirmed. Nerf ASM, ASM nice. ASM H. A church of cow, elephant, and a whale should be founded. GG cow hex. ASM card carry. Nice comeback. Nerf ASM. Ace the machine. Uh, some other things being said about ASM that I probably cannot say on stream. Dominant performance. GG. Holy wow. Is it coincident? ASM only wins with na natives? <laughs> ASM carries. What a game. Hard carry. <laughs> this was definitely a very nice swing and a very nice play by ASM. And I think we should honor ASM by adding some cow hacks in the chat. So everyone use ESOC cow hacks in the chat right now if you're subscribed especially. And then we can uh, give ASM the honor he uh, should have by uh, giving him some cows. <laughs> okay, so Migo choosing a level 20 home city. I'm not quite sure if he's trolling or if this is the only Japanese civilization he has. Ah, there he has got a, a higher one. Okay, so probably just uh, joking around here a little, little bit. Still funny to see a level 20 here. Of course, if you're level 20, you really don't have... Uh, enough experience or, or enough cards in your home city to uh, choose every card that you want or build every deck that you want so um, yeah you shouldn't ever play with such a low home city basically um, if you have a low home city shipments a uh, low home cities uh, in level and if you want to level them up you can use the XP mod and it's just a tool built into the ESOP patch and you play one game with another person and you immediately get so much experience that you will get a level 100 um, home city immediately so if you're in the in the chat and you're like hey I have a low home city I want to level them up um, try using the XP mod there's a Wikipedia wiki page around it on the ESOC wiki not Wikipedia but the ESOC wiki um, and uh, you uh, find all the instructions there about how to use the XP mod um, there's also a channel on our dedicated discord server and you can uh, schedule XP mod games there so if you in need for uh, more experience you can schedule a game there and make sure you get the home cities you need <laughs> ladies and gentlemen thank you for the cow hexes in the chat Let's make sure ASM sees them. Looks like he isn't in the chat himself, which is logical. Okay. Uh, is it winner picks first or alternating? And I'm pretty sure that this is alternating, which means that once the first winner is established, it just alternates and it's not... Um, whoever wins after that doesn't matter.
Yes. Our pick has no counters. Interesting claim. Looks like Dutch has been picked now. Of course, Team Migo and Tebben picked Dutch already, but Asim and Chelly didn't yet. Thank you, Brook, for sending the link for the calendar in the chat. Uh, the ESO calendar is uh, basically a Google calendar, but you can like integrate it in your mobile phone or in your work calendar or whatever you want. And then you can always stay up to date. Um, also, the calendar shows up on the front page of the forums right now. There's an event schedule on the front page. And you can see exactly when new streams are coming and when you should tune in. So check out the front page of our website and check out that calendar, the event schedule, if you want to stay up to date. Thank you, Egomet, for posting the link of the XP mod. If you are in need for more experience on your home cities, check out that page and it will tell you exactly what to do um, if you want to use the XP mod. Looks like we're going to see some Ottomans, two times even. And Iroquois. I'm not quite sure if we're all set or if yeah. they're still signing, but uh, let's green up and go into this last game. There's this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. There's also another one I made that says, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back as well. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. <laughs> that one's great. Let's let's listen to it again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It feels so so heroic or something to announce a game like that. And uh, I think that's all in order for this final game, which should be uh, an exciting conclusion to this series. Of course, this series is part of a bigger tournament, a 2 versus 2 tournament. This is indeed the general stable 2 versus 2 tournament. So uh, uh, one, of the, one of the only 2 versus 2 tournaments I think we have this year. Uh, we don't really have them all that often, so definitely check it out. and check out uh, the rest of the series later this is the first one and uh, there are still four teams left or uh, eight teams left in four rounds and uh, well we're working all the way until only got two teams left in a grand finale but uh, for now let's focus on this final game and let's hope that they are finally not away from keyboard but are finally able to click in Okay, looks like Chelly is back from his bathroom break. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Isok Mendocino is the map we are playing on in this fifth and last game of the series. We have Ottoman and Dutch versus Ottoman and Iroquois. So it's going to be uh, some Abyss heavy games probably. Uh, Abyss heavy match. Um, maybe we see some Janissary rush as well. It uh, should be interesting. And what is interesting as well is that the teams are um, like... The the positions of the teams are like in a square so this distance is not much longer than this one so it's uh, the teams are kind of isolated it's really hard to reach the other player um, and not getting caught in between of course there are these holes in the ground where you cannot uh, pass so that does help uh, the map a little bit
Ah, looks like we have to restart. Telly doesn't have uh, a mine, and neither does ASAMC. Oh, well, <laughs> it doesn't fix with a re, he says. Um, yes. It's really hard to play a Dutch on the map, then, uh, definitely. So, uh, let's see if we can fix it any other way. Maybe we can pick another map and maybe we can just ask players to adapt and maybe play a, a civilization that is not too dependent on mines. Let's figure it out in the lobby here. Let's see if I got uh, a taunt that is... Uh, A taunt that can give you the emotion I'm feeling right now. Uh, something like, why would you play Dutch? Why did I play this hip? Okay, looks like it's a good idea to take another map from another map pool. Um, let's see what the next map should be. Um, going to quickly take a look. So yeah, there are a lot of other maps we could pick and uh, maybe it sounds like a good idea to pick another one. <laughs> Just fast fortress and send advanced plantation. Okay, that's one way to solve it. Let's get this music here on again. To have something on the background. Human has subscribed to Isaac. Human, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chat. And uh, now you have access to those OP Isoc emotes: the cow hacks, the Karja, the easy, and the Somali tactics. Welcome, and uh, thank you for supporting us with your subscription. That's a problem. Now we're going just going to just have. Uh, a lot of discussion about what to pick. That's not really something you want to have when uh, having to restart.
Yeah, if they can agree with, with, on a map that is in a map pool, I'm fine with that. But uh, yes. Okay. Looks like they are agreeing. No. Arizona is fine. Okay. Well, that seems fine to me then as well. Um, I don't think we should make it too big of a deal and try to talk it out for hours um, and just get ready and get into this game. It's already just the first round of the tournament. Um, ladies and gentlemen, after some confusion and after some discussion in the chat and after a lot of drama, uh, we finally click into this fifth game here on Arizona. Ottoman and Dutch versus Ottoman and Iroquois. And they are finally going to play this. And uh, I'm going to turn off the music here and make sure everyone can hear me. And I'm going to commentate this last epic match between Chali and Asam versus Migo and Teben. Arizona. Um, as you can see, a long trade route crosses the center of the map. And as you can see, that's the case. Four trade posts on there, so one for everyone. Uh, but are they going to give everyone a trade post or are they going to fight uh, for it? We're going to have to see. The Huns are a little bit scattered, I think, always. But uh, should be enough to... Uh, to keep your villagers relatively safe. Uh, this is an interesting mechanic. There's a big, big plateau here in the center. And of course you cannot cross that. So you can walk between it uh, over the trade route, but you cannot actually walk on that plateau. And uh, that makes it interesting. Most of the time, either one of the players goes for the left side or the right side, but you cannot build your forward base in the center. And uh, that is... Uh, that's an interesting mechanic and uh, something that is uh, really uh, identifies this map. Um, in terms of treasures, there's quite a quite a lot of powerful treasures here, but it looks like both of the heroes of the Ottoman players are not even going for the treasures, but just going straight for the trade wood. And uh, looks like Chelly has been uh, victorious there and uh, was there first, so he's going to build the trade wood while Teban has to go to the next one and is going to receive his uh, experience points a little bit later. But it shouldn't be too influential yet. He's not losing his hero and he can still build his trade post in time. Um, Asem is scouting around. In Holland is <laughs> his uh, Dutch hero called, of course, named after uh, named after me since I'm from Holland as well. Thank you, Asem, for that tribute. Let's see some cow hacks in the chat to give him a tribute as well. Looks like after the trade post was taken, 80 XP is now being taken by Team Asem and uh, going to have that uh, second tra second shipment a little bit earlier, or his first one even. Um, Quite a late game deck actually with uh, the tulip speculation and the food silos. Interesting to see that. Um, so yeah, what can we expect from the civilizations? Ottoman uh, are very strong in uh, the second age. They have Janissaries which are better musketeers and they have Abyss guns which are extremely powerful skirmisher type units. And uh, I assume both of them are actually going Abyss guns and uh, the other civilizations are going to back it up with either Hussars or Musketeers, Tomahawks, uh, whatever. So uh, I think we should, should see some Abyss guns but maybe we're going to see some kind of a Janissary rush uh, as a gimmick to try and take the other one by surprise. Villager being taken by Team Chelly here. Uh, that helps him a lot, especially Ottomans, since their economy is not great. So getting other villager is uh, definitely helpful. And uh, there's still a lot of tre other treasures left on the map. Big XP treasures, big coin treasures, uh, more coin, hero HP, um, more experience points, food. There are so many treasures on this map and a lot of very powerful ones. Uh, once you need a small army to actually defeat them. So that should be enough... Uh, Enough to keep uh, both players busy. Looks like everyone is now aging up ex except for um, Migo. Want Migo is still trying to gather the food required to age and is now aging up. Um, now we're going to see if both the players are going to rush both the teams or if it's going to be some kind of a, uh, a mix of a rush and maybe a fast semi fortress. Um, as you can see, Temin is going forward with two villagers. So he's definitely going to build either an artillery foundry or a barracks, uh, probably around here uh, next to the mines and the hunts and close to the enemy base. Miko not sending a villager forward because he's going to age up with uh, a warhead. So he's going to have a warhead travois and he's going to build, uh, run that forward and build a warhead here. Bill Jeans is uh, tagging me in the chat. What's up Bill Jeans? Tell me what's going on. 
uh, can reply <laughs> to you. Um, let's see, ASAM building a bank and no forward villager for ASAM and no forward villager for Chelly. Of course, um, the Dutch player is going to be a little bit later than the Eorka player probably, so um, it's probably going to be uh, hard for them to keep up with the speed of the Ottoman and Eorka. So they're going to build um, something in their base um, and not going to build anything forward. A church going up for ASAM. Unique church improvements. Let's take a look at shipments sent. No second shipment uh, yet for ASAM and we should wait for that to see what he's going to do with that church. Artillery foundry up for Tevin as I expected and of course for Migo I assume the Trahois is going forward but I haven't actually seen it yet um, where's this Trahua? Mm. because uh, when the Iroqua ages up they always get a free Trahua oh there it is okay he's really late with that I, I feel like um, it's already been almost five minutes and he still has to walk all the way over here um, Okay, some... Oh, a spy! Getting out a spy just to take out this hero. And for Iroquois, the hero is actually quite an important unit. Uh, since um, it boosts all the units in range. So it's really important for Migo to, to keep that alive. But uh, getting one spy, it may be worth it. But I'm not quite convinced yet. A spy can go in stealth and a hero can spot stealth units. But the hero is down. So he cannot... S <laughs> spot the stealth unit so he can stand right next to it in stealth and once it wakes up he can immediately bash it down again uh, spy has got like times 20 or times 40 even damage against hero so it's just a, a two hit a kill basically and uh, ASM should be able to keep that hero lying on the floor dead for uh, well maybe the rest of the game even uh, some of the first Ottoman Abbas guns are now out for Chelly and he's just going straight for the artillery foundry of Tabin and uh, he doesn't even have any military units out neither from his barracks so it's going to be hard to actually defend this artillery foundry without units and Chelly went for three hussars first so he's definitely going to have the military advantage at least early on Migo is in ASIM's base though with some Kenya horsemen trying to take out some villagers but there's one pikeman out <laughs> for ASIM and that's enough actually to scare away the Kenya horsemen uh, from Migo so he's going back to his war hut I'm not quite sure where the other warhead from Migo has gone to. Um, because he's actually building a warhead now with his uh, <laughs> with his villagers. So it's uh, actually quite interesting to see. I'm not quite sure what Migo's build is here. Perhaps I can ask him after the game. Because uh, this is an interesting strategy for him for sure. The four Kenyans are now coming to the other side of the map. Since uh, Tevin definitely needs some help here. His barracks is going down. It's getting rushed down by Abbas guns. Uh, some skirmishers from ASAM. And the Hussars that he sent. And four Kenyans are going to help against that skirmisher mass. But it's not going to be enough at all. And especially with the Hussars. Which do fairly good against Kenya horsemen. This is not going to be an effective trade from Migo. Um, there are now some Tomahawks being added as well but there's still plenty of Abyssins left to deal with them and uh, Tevin is going to have a hard time defending this. He's going to have another artillery foundry in his base now and uh, he's going to train some more Abyssins from there but uh, I'm not quite sure if that's going to be enough to defend this and uh, this uh, this barracks is definitely going down. Tevin has now reached the Fortress Age and now uh, finally Ottoman can send some, uh, some better shipments and uh, get some units out out, but is it going to be enough for him? ASM is quite ahead in economic power with the two banks that he has. He still got that hero down uh, on the ground. Some pikemen are now out. He sent eight pikemen. He's going to deny another warhead. As you can see, four tomahawks are there. But some skirmishers coming forward and they're going to be sniped off. And uh, I'm not quite sure if I want to be in the position of Tabin and Migo at the moment. Um, I mean... I mean, they are in a fortress age, but they're losing so many villager seconds by these Abyssins and skirmishers going forward. There's still Hussars running around. Two Falconets are now out for Tevin. But he has nothing to protect it. Just four... 
just for Falk, uh, just for Abyssins, and those hussars are going to scout out the Falconets, and probably those Ottoman uh, Abyssins are just going straight to, to the Falconets then as well, just trying to bash them down. Let's see if he actually chooses to do so. Meanwhile, he's losing a house here and a lot of villager HP. Uh, so Tevin is basically stuck in his base right now. And meanwhile, in Mako's base, it's not getting much better. Um, Pikeman doing a lot of damage against the Kenya Horseman, tanking some damage in ranged. Uh, Skirmishers, meanwhile, in the in the back, doing the damage and GG being called by team Mego. Tevin has resigned and Mego is out of the game and we have a victor uh, of this series. Shelly and ASAM coming out 3-2-2 and going to the next age. Mego not aging fast for a rush. Yeah, so I think that was maybe one of the problems that that team had was that they, uh, he aced up late and he was really late with getting units out and uh, that really failed the rush from team Mego. Uh, from, yeah, from team Mego. The warhead location was uh, was really awkward as well. Um, That was a, a quick but exciting last game and uh, well, uh, uh, exciting yes. end to this series. Five games we have seen in this best of five and that uh, concludes this first series. The Warheads after that too ambitious, yeah, building it here and then building it here. It's just, if you get get rushed down in your forward base, just go back all the way to your base and not try, try not to build it here because it's just going to seats down as well. GG's says ASAMC. And uh, well, that uh, that definitely was. And as you can see in the military unit population, they were just way faster with getting units out. And uh, their trades were just way more effective because of that. And with that, this first series between Chelly and Azem and Miko and Tevin is concluded.